the 90s, Playmates Toys made the deepest line of Star Trek action figures in history. My name's Keith, and I'm a collector working towards owning all 284. I've been a Trek fan for almost 35 years, and most people are sick of me talking about it. But somehow I've convinced my old friend Mike to review them with me on... Look at my Star Trek toys! What's up, everybody? I waited for the whoosh this time. Welcome back to Look at My Star Trek Toys. Today we have another fantastic customs episode. We have some fun surprises. It's not just custom figures. Maybe we got some other stuff going on. Ooh. It's really fun. Excited. It's Groundhog Day. We've already recorded the first 20 minutes of this, but we didn't record it, Mike. How's it going? Well, I mean, theoretically, we, we recorded the audio, so it exists, Keith. We can listen back mm. and hear how terrible we were the first time. Hmm which is highly possible, but it doesn't matter. Enough of this nonsense. Happy to be here for customs. Uh, Keith, I want to tell you, we've reached the point where sometimes mm. when I just shout into the void to our our, our collection of folks who, who follow us on the internet, sometimes they deliver. I, I, got, a, I got a message from our last Deep Space Nine episode uh, about a character I really loved, and one of our... Dear custom, I don't want to give away too much. Said, you oh. know what? I could, I could build that for you. Wait, and I do said, I not know about? And this? I said, no, no, surely you don't have to do that. And they said, no, no, no. It's going to take me a little while because I'm gone on vacay. But after my vacay, I'm going to have a stab at it. So, Keith, uh, holy spoiler whoa. alert for the future. Um, uh, my whims are being catered to, and that is a dangerous, dangerous alley that we've entered. Uh, this is from a guy who got, got warped. I did get the boot Super shivs. mega boot shift I, I warp. And never. Well, here's the problem with that. Uh, I can't hold it in my hands. So though I did conjure it, I don't own it. And so there is a, the, you know, as as Quark would say, ownership is the 187th. The there is no value higher than ownership, which is, I believe, the 187th rule of acquisition, Keith. Mm. Who have I become? Yeah. <laughs> Who have right, well, I that's, become? Well, that's the thing. Like, A, you're communicating with people that I don't know about. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dangerous thing to begin with. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, no, Mike is now so fully invested. He is manifesting things. And next week, a uh, little spoiler, a little teaser, both of us got things in the mail and we are going to unbox them together uh neither one of us knows kind of what's in either one of them so could be anything so we're going to do can live i admit something here on the internet that i don't think i've even told you yet <clears throat> it's so bizarre uh so when i was growing up in my early teens and i remember deep space nine being on television and i scoffed at it because i though i didn't watch next gen regularly i thought nah, mm -hmm. that's just a it's an also ran it's never it's you know it's like a, a cash in whatever whatever my feelings were about but for some reason i hated the design of quark when i would see him in commercials and everything they had shimmerman doing a lot of promo right and i was like oh it's so uh, I, like i didn't get it obviously out of context quark wasn't for me apparently and it's so ironic to me that 30, 40, however many years later. 30, yeah. I, I am a Ferengi fan. I, I'm, I am, Quark is, I think, my favorite character on the show. And uh, it's it's funny. I'm laughing at little me. For many reasons, that being one of them. For, for many reasons, yeah. Well, and look, we we grow, we mature, we gray. As we were, as we were talking about, like, you know, Mike, Mike can't, his, his camera can't figure out what to do with the gray hair. And mm -hmm. I look like I have a patchy beard. It's not patchy. It's just white. And I'm also crazy white. So anyway, uh, what are we doing? Speaking oh, of crazy, gonna... Keith, the people mm. crazy enough to help us fiscally mm. can be found on this slide and you can become one of them at patreon.com slash K and M. There are pips to be had. You can decide which pip is for you. Keith, Who's rocking those pips? Who's pipping and popping? The leaderboards boards are moving. People are upping their antes. People are changing designations. Tell us all about it. They sure are. At the captain's level, four pips, it's Brian Kaufman and Casey Clark. At the commander level, it's Bren Joshua. With the three pips, we have some lieutenants of Andrew Hayes, Jorge Navoa, and the mysterious Worf's boot shivs, Richard Coleman, and dun, 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 officially promoted from Ensign to Lieutenant Charles 
Babbage, and of course our Ensign CRM Productions, Nikolai Ivanovich Lobachevsky at Grim Toys and Delusions at Noon. Mike, what are they finding? You if know, they log on to patreon.com. I'm just so happy you asked, Keith. I'm just so happy mm. you asked. Are you? Yeah, I am. They get all kinds of random stuff. Ask me anything. You want to know anything? Keith and I answer it. We got to do yeah. one of those coming up. We also we watch do. episodes of other shows at different times. Sometimes we watch The Next Generation. We just watched one, which is a really interesting episode. I met alternate Frakes. You um, met evil twin Frakes. Is he evil? He's not evil yet for me. He just... No. I mean, he no, is. He, he's not particularly uh, honoring the the bro code i'll tell you that much <laughs> no what but, but but which one of them isn't honoring the bro yeah, code that's true that's well the thing. find out our thoughts what he is is he's salty uh, he's, find he's out not our evil thoughts twin. he's salty twin. on patreon we also have watched some animated series uh we've watched some, we're going to be watching some other stuff we play some games i played some games on there we got all kinds of fun stuff and you can watch me watch every single episode of deep space nine before keith and i talk about it on wednesdays with my lovely wife ceo jen Mm -hmm. uh so we'd appreciate your support over there it helps support the show it does go a long way in offsetting our time it is a work day as you can tell keith and i are gonna be checking our texts because we at work well no that that uh, well yes it is a work day and i'm doing that but i just wanted to show everybody so th this is something that happens i i get a text message of a video of mike playing a, a game and weeping yeah it's basically just mike weeping on camera so if you want that uh I, I don't, but you can at patreon.com yep. slash K and We're going to talk about that on Monday's Geekly, and it's available to patrons right now. It might find its way over to YouTube. We'll see. Also, uh, last thing, if you want to just, if you don't have, you can't afford a monthly contribution or you've got other things, we totally get it. Uh, you can throw us a tip here in the super thanks right in the comment box. You can just tip us whatever it is. Uh, or even better, Give us a like, give us a subscribe. I know some of you that yep. watch have not done so, understandably, but I want to let you know it is not a fool's errand. It really helps the channel. It helps our analytics. It also helps us get into more people's feeds, and we want more people to see these customs. Keith, yes. let's move forward. Indeed. And uh, if you have now just, uh, are you thinking in your head, I got it. Why have I wasted so much time watching these guys beg for money? I wish there was some way. Oh, there is. There's chapters below. You can cut right to the good stuff in your next video because uh, we've already wasted your time for this video. We've wasted and our time because we've done it twice. You, you can't get your time back. No. no, it's there forever. All right. But you want to know what else is there forever? Our first fantastic custom figure submitted by Patrick Dickerson, who sent this along a David... Uh, Dr. David Marcus, Owner. it might be uh, it, it it might be Kirk's son, uh, but but why do I say owner? Why do I say submitted? Because Patrick did not create this figure. He purchased this figure on eBay years ago, and so we don't know who created this figure. So is it you? Hey, did you make this figure? Or do you know who made this figure? Please reach out to us at lookatmystartrektoys at gmail.com. We would love to credit you for your work and see more of it. 100%. So if, if, you, uh, if you know who it is, or if you have more figures you would like us to show on the air, uh, and, and we haven't met, or we have, send it to lookatmystartrektoys at gmail.com. So uh, anyway, so this is a Playmates-style custom figure of David Marcus. But uh, here's the thing. It's in its package, and the package itself is also completely customized in the Playmate style. Very cool. Um, and then printed and rebuilt. It's it's beautiful. The, the graphic design is excellent. Um, the figure is excellent. What a great approximation of the uh, of the the screenshot we see above, um, which is uh, you know it's it's now clearly a Star Trek trope. Are you a uh, are, are you a captain of a certain age and uh, have have you been maybe uh, you know having a little adventures like twenty five years ago or so and your cast getting a little old you got to bring a little you know young hot action to it you might just have a surprise son and uh, maybe you do because it shows up a couple of times. If you're to, a Starfleet uh, captain, don't mm -hmm. do twenty three and me. I think is no. is the lesson we've learned, Keith. Because your dalliances will show up in a movie or miniseries coming up later. and uh, Now, things are getting niche for niche for me. First of all, 
I love the custom packagings when they get done. I, I don't mm-hmm. know what it is about it, just sort of the assembly. This, but I'll say this. So when it, I understand a lot of people collect figures and keep them in box, right? Collectibles yeah. in box is a thing. Totally get it. Not generally my thing. I like to rip that box open and get my toy, and and at least it, once or twice experience them in hand. However, when it comes to the customs, speaking niche of niche, the cus I. Look, I appreciate all the work all of our custom makers have done in their own lovely way. <clears throat> Something about the custom figure inside of the custom custom box is my favorite thing. Something about the total package of it, the 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 whole story it tells, the whole sort of fiction of it but ground it in our reality of something that we have tangibly experienced. It, 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 it scratches the nostalgia itch. It is a, it's a different type of creativity. It's paying homage, not just to the character, but also to the line because it's replicating the whole box and everything. It's very cool. I, this is, I appreciate this quite a bit. How about the back of the box, Keith? Let's look at the back. And once again, it has completed the custom packaging front and back with some screenshots from the wrath of Khan. Uh, Looks fantastic. Yeah. Um, just, it's good. It's great graphic design. The printing is excellent. Um, it looks like it was printed on on cardboard or cardstock. Glossy. It's a it's a really nice custom figure. And and I and obviously at some point whoever this was was selling these, and uh, I think it's a good purchase. Yeah, um, it's hard to tell if because I've actually purchased some of the uh boxes the the cardstock boxes because my i have i want to do a project because we had boxes made for us for our figures yes um which i sent to you to make and we should have done uh like uh, like six months well, ago i have a pretty good printer i will say uh it's a late a color laser printer and there's no way in the god's green earth i could possibly print on cardstock um i've checked that even the thin stuff but what you can do is laser print the paper paste it onto the cardstock and, and glue then do it on the cardstock yeah and then exacto knife it that's just something i have not done just for us yet um yeah see jd it's mike it's not me yeah he, he gonna do it he gonna do it or he gonna mail it to keith and make him do it um <laughs> i'm not a crafty guy um <laughs> it's just not it's not what i do well i'm nervous but mike bringing it back to to today uh it's hard to tell if this is which with me- which method this is if this is printed direct on the box or yeah, I mean, it looks like it. I mean, it's hard to tell from this yeah. picture. Anyway. It's well done, uh, one way or the other, yeah. But yeah, go go to the, the front again. I'd just like to point out just some of the skill that went into the sculpt on this, including the like the weird sort of ridges on the on the bicep there. This is obviously had to be hand sculpted in some fashion um, to get down to that level of detail on well, the figure. How about, did you notice the two-tone? Notice in the screenshot, he's got different color sleeves and that's replicated yeah. on the figures. Well. It's all replicated there. And the, and the little thing it's, it's an excellent sculpt. Whoever did that sculpt, it's excellent. Uh, so, all right. So that's David Marcus. Um, there's a, we have more from Keith? that era, the movie eras. I got to fess up. Oh, my, I, I do box. Do? I do Dickerson's. This was me. Do you, mm-hmm. did you? I can't, I, 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 exacto knifing a box way above my pay grade, but uh-huh. full custom, yeah, I got it. Do you realize the terror you just put <laughs> through me? Because, let, let me, all right, peek behind the curtain. Uh, I do spot. Blah, blah, blah. We're talking, we're talking, we're talking, we're talking. Then there's a little pause, and then I hear this from Mike. Keith, that usually means <laughs> I, I didn't to. press record yeah. or something is corrupted and we have to do this whole thing a third time. So don't ever make that noise unless you mean it, Mike. Keith, the, I mean, can I get my recognition? I did it. I made it. I made another custom. You No, you didn't. Oh, no. All right. This just in. Uh, no, it's not me. It's not. It's not Mike. Nice perm. All right. Okay, moving on. So let's move on to another fantastic custom, including hand sculpting, and that is Admiral Necheyev from our good friend JD at JD Makes. You can check out his channel, uh, link below. He also reviews Star Trek action figures. He does customs. He does tutorials on how you do customs and does uh, artwork that you can also purchase from JD. Definitely check it all out. Uh, he is he is the expert to our, he he creates and we appreciate. That's mm-hmm. how that works, uh, but a good friend. So here's what he said about Admiral Necheyev. 
So I made some admirals recently. I had to do Admiral Necheyev because she was Star Trek's first recurring admiral. And first crossover admiral. She was in four episodes of Next Generation and two episodes of Deep Space Nine, which you should be getting close to soon because he's tracking what we're up to. Yeah, yeah. there are fans, Keith, who watch and participate in the show. But then there are super fans, and those are the ones who know where we are in any series and so don't submit their customs until they know where we've probably hit that episode. That is the level of detail it takes to be a J.D., I'm not sure anyone would uh, want to be called a fan of us, but somebody who tolerates our nonsense at the very least. It's all right to be be a fan as long as you're not standing down win. Because we stink, Keith. Fan. Fan. Oh, if you're a super fan, then you get that reference. (laughs) If you really know. if If you're one of the three people who watched our previous show. Hey, we did every episode. We sure did. Anyway, uh, JD continues, it could be debated that Necheyev is the only crossover admiral, depending on how you consider Janeway's appearances, because she only appeared as an admiral in a Next Generation movie and Prodigy. But what are you asking, dear listener? How did JD make this figure? Oh, I'd love to show you. I certainly would like to know, because once again, I am so like blown away by the sculpts. Uh, that JD and the other creators do, because I don't understand how it's done. I should say this, though. I think this is the Necheyev from Next Gen, not only from the screenshot, uh, but because she's smiling. And if my experience of her in Deep Space Nine, she unpleasant. Well, but you were experiencing what the founders created. Mm, You're right. It was was a a simulation version of Necheyev. She might be really nice, but... You couldn't really even call that, like, a... It was inside their brains, right? So it wasn't even a digital or virtual. It was sort of like a neurological version of her. Kind of like a software version. Yeah. Yeah. It was like a video game version of her. Anyway, so JD created this, taking uh, Crusher in her coat as the the body to work from, uh, which means he had to finish the coat by magic. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, and then took a uh, Deanna Troy head, had to cut off her hair, build it out in some places, delete it in other places, change the color. She's even got the bad ombre. Uh, it's amazing. I, I, I assume he, he decided to go with the the non-crusher head because that man, that crusher head is, is bad. That's like maybe one of the worst sculpts. It's not a great sculpt. It like doesn't even look sculpt. really human at least. Uh, Troy looks like a person. There's something. There's a. There's a canvas to work there. Sort of. Yeah. I, I've always. I've never liked that Troy's paint because she's looks like she, was like firmly '80s lady with way yeah. too much makeup. But uh, nonetheless, I think what JD created is better than either one of those two figures. Hundred percent. Yeah. Uh, and then having and what to, I always really like is, like you said, the, the clearly you had to fill in where the jacket and the chest meet in order to make it one piece. But then the the, the sand and paint makes it look you cannot tell. Like on that one, on that one uh, uh, Riker figure where they just kind of like sculpt over, paint over the messed up right. uniform, you can easily tell. But here, when a when a true artist does it, <laughs> no, it's, uh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and and then the incredible fine detail work, hand painting those stripes, yeah, really in the cool. line, like on on the wrist and then down the center. I I can you imagine having the dexterity with your hands to be able to do that? No, I was just talking yesterday. I my hand hurts. I think I might have carpal tunnel. Like this this part of my hand has been really hurting. When someone shakes my hand, it feels like I want to cry. That's how bad it's. It, but not like. It doesn't hurt like this, right? It's, it didn't yeah. swell or anything. It's not broken. I don't know. Well, I think I have some sort of issue. It wouldn't surprise, you know, it surprised me that either one of us, with the amount of time we spend typing and on the computer and, clicking, and or yeah. playing piano and guitar, uh, that de- definitely happens. All right. Well, um, more fantastic work from JD. Check out JD Makes here on the YouTubes. Coming up next, Mike, I'm going to make you explain this one because you f- you have the knowledge and the life experience to explain Keith, this long figure. ago, a neophyte in the Star Trek universe, me- mere newbie, I was watching season one of Deep Space Nine, and I came upon an episode with my good friend Keith, mm. where Kira travels to a planet to evict this guy 
from his home world because they are doing something to the planet. Uh, I can't remember what. MacGuffin, MacGuffin, <laughs> they got to get this guy out. But Keith, all he wants to do is mm-hmm. make vegetables, chop them up, listen to birds tweeting, thanks, Uncle Jim, and build this, like, Adobe fireplace hut thing, digital thing, lay tiles and stuff. And he's so grumpy, and, and Kira, like, really is just like, we got to get out of here. But then they grow to have mutual respect, and I think she mm. tricks him and makes him leave. Uh, she burns down his house. Yes, that's what it is. It's it's arson. But you know what? I, it's arson with love, keys, Keith. Keith? <laughs> Ah, uh, love arson. This is going Mike's. well. <laughs> love arson, and look, he's got his little killing smock on. Uh, this he's actually it was a great performance, and uh, I can't believe they didn't actually have the character, but it's so cool. I love, I love him. And I, this, of I course, one. is from our good friend Joshua Cronin. Who wait has, is that Latinum behind him? Yeah, Are those this pieces of behind Latinum? him. Oh man, yeah, Josh! Man, I just want to go hang out at Josh's house. Unquestionably, I mean, uh, we we showed Joshua's uh, Deep Space Nine playset um, a couple episodes ago, which is a which is a giant hit. And uh, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anyone in the world with a more extensive Deep Space Nine collection than Joshua. Keith, Joshua and I might be chatting offline. I don't know what to tell you. Well, yeah, whatever. He chats with me too. <laughs> anyway, it's a fantastic figure um really cool you know I, I don't know how i don't know how he did it how we got the collar is that from a different figure i, I have to break i well because it's got the Bajor- are there him. are there male bajoran figures uh oh in the actual line like is there is there a barile i bet it's a barile yeah. i bet the nose is from but but it might not i, I don't know i you know what i we should just ask him at some point because that but, looks like this guy like i would be like that's it looks just like him it's, yeah. it's instantly recognizable as mullabuck um fantastic and the hand painting of the sort of the the thatchy lines on the uh, on the smock there fantastic you know fantastic it, 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 work. it stands to illustrate also his diorama last week uh mm-hmm. and some of the other pieces and this goes for a lot of our creators but you know, one thing Playmates was constrained with budgetarily, and a lot of action figure companies is we talked about this with Meg, the Mega Line too. The anyway, the choking hazards or the kind of accoutrement that a, that accompany the figures are often sort of pointless throwaways, or they don't really illustrate or tell a story. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that little little teeny things can't tell a story. Like this this Adobe Hut tells the whole episode, right? It completely ties him directly into the story. And a lot of those mega seven inch figures we were looking at, yeah. they have the different hands or the like the 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 visor for data dealing cards or right. whatnot. They all right, tell right. a little bit of the story. So so accoutrement, the choking hazards don't have to be pointless. No, I, I, you know what's so funny? As we've been sitting here, you saying that reminded me that he made the brick oven too. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so he had to, all you right. You don't so. just make the brick oven, Keith. I guarantee you if we go to the episode and we yeah. look at the, the pieces, that the tiles that have yet to be laid, I bet that's it. it well, it's, it's craziness. And he had to, you know, either cut or make or find the each of the little pieces there. Uh, it's craziness. It's it's hard to even say more nice things. So we're just going to show you more figures from Joshua. And Mike, you're going to explain this to me again. Uh, oh yeah, this was uh, the the like there was like a custody dispute with this little kid. Right, he was being raised. He was an orphan from the occupation, and he was mm-hmm. being raised by. Uh, the Bajorans, but being taught to hate his 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 actual species, and he's conflicted. And the guy who it was a higher up, and it turns out that he actually wasn't. He was like the the son of a leader, one of the one of the Gauls. And so the Michigas takes place, and he gets returned to his family. And it's like there's a lot of what we love about Deep Space Nine, a lot of gray area, and a lot of emotional turmoil. And now it is represented here in a child's toy. In three, three child's toys. Three toys. toys. Is this the, no, I'm not letting a kid play with these. The kid, is though, it, the kid is the the. I think that crown jewel of I, this lot. The whole. I, how <laughs> is it from a different line? 
because there's no, no that, that adolescent kid's face figure. Is, could they the take him like a, a Rom or a Naga? Or no, like it must be from a different line, right? Because he's it's, it's got to be because there, there's nothing. But the whole scale. face is is sculpted, and it looks like him. Fi- and it each all three of these look like the figure, and especially like the um, uh, Pro- uh, Padar's eyes, which I thought were so good in the episode. It's right there. I don't know. How, I don't know how the hell he did this. <laughs> Although I like angry. the I like the picture because it it, it gives a the fanfic ending. Well, you know what it turns out, Keith? They decided to just be a couple and raise him mutually. That's what. That's such is. a good choice. <laughs> yeah, I love it. That's perfect. Uh, but also, can we talk about the paint job? The paint job yes. on Rugal's jacket. Look how. how? <laughs> What's it? I'm just I'm I'm always so like dumbfounded by how people do these things. It looks like it could be a tutor, right? Yeah. It's got like a royal jacket there. And the I mean the to sculpt on these by hand. Yeah, Josh, these I would this one I would appreciate a little insight as to how yeah. he had made the kid. That's cool. How the hell did you do any of these? Uh really, really excellent. And 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 this is where we get into the depth of Joshua's line. Mm-hmm. Because this isn't a famous episode. These aren't characters that are like, you know, recurring. It's not Garrick. It's not whatever. This is one off characters who just right. did a beautiful job in the episode. And you have figures of, I mean, the, the depth of the line that Josh was created from deep space nine is astounding. Um, so there's plenty more where that came from. Um, and uh, so it's, it's really, really cool. So if you, like Joshua, are creating amazing figures and you want to send them our way, look at my Star Trek toys at gmail.com. Now, yeah, and uh, when you send them, send any context context that you think would be interesting for our viewers. And, you know, if you want to send some in progress or making ofs or anything for that matter, yep. feel free to send it along. Keith will Keith does a lot of editorial before anything makes it to air. So uh, I do a lot of yes, a lot of a lot of eh, a lot of work happens behind this absolute mess. That and then we I every just week. blather nonsense on mm-hmm. top of it. No, oh, that's a, that's our brand. <laughs> so now this next one is going to blow your mind because this one, we say, look at my Star Trek toys, right? We've shown figures. We have shown uh, uh, play sets, dioramas. We've shown ships. We have shown... I think we showed a car, if I'm not mistaken. We've shown a car. But have we shown you a phone? And coming up next from our good friend Jesse Tizio with the car is an Android phone. Get out of here. <laughs> Wait, is that a watch to... on the back also? Is it I'm both things? Ex- I'm going to explain what it is. So Jesse says, hi, Keith and Mike. I'm the one with the shuttlecraft. Oh, we know. <laughs> I have been I have been trying many ways to create a real interactive data phone. I always wanted something like this. In all truth, this is what having a phone uh, is all about. The Apple Watch is how I originally gathered the idea by attaching it to a decent sized data figure. I mm-hmm. found a knockoff on Amazon, and it works just great. I can even hold on to him like a telephone. I get attention out in public and on my gigs this way. So she attached a a, a watch, a smart watch to the back of a data to make it an Android phone. Come on. That is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> and what is it? Even, uh, did now hold on. Is the data yeah. How there are did she somehow get speakers in his arm? I don't know because that looks like those holes it, indicate speakers. In indicate that's a really good question. I don't think this is a simple. I pasted a phone to his back. I think she did you hollow out the back of the data and so, yeah, drill so that, holes to be a speaker. That's what it seems like. Shut the front door. All right. Well, Jesse, we have more questions. Uh, we're gonna have to do a follow up on this. We got a clip, buddy. Once there were two mice who became friends at Mouse College. One was from Data. the city, the other from the country. Data. When they graduated. They no. promised they would stay friends. I don't want that story. Each other. Tell me a different story. This is the story of how Nancy the spider got his long, spindly legs. So you could talk he walked into town to Data. And smelled all the food his animal friends were cooking. 
He asked his friend Rabbit for some of his famous stewed greens. Un They're almost ready and Unbelievable. Data, what's the weather going to be for tomorrow? Looks like it will be cloudy tomorrow. Daytime temperatures will hover around 64 degrees, with overnight lows around 45. I mean, just really think about... Thank you. What... You're welcome. <laughs> just think about what Jesse has created here. Because got nothing else to say, Data. Well, I'm that's not sure the. I understand. <laughs> There's nothing else we should say. Okay, so let's just break this down. Assume Android. You gotta get one. <laughs> if let's go, let's pretend it's 1993 when Data was on TV. Can you imagine having? A data you could have a conversation with and would give you information. I think, so all of our custom makers, all of the people we interact with on all of our shows uh, represent this to me. But but I think Jessie's really, really bringing it home today because I think she's representing exactly what this channel is and why I love it so much, Keith, why I love what we're doing so much. I use the word whimsy all the time and I think that, yes, this is a great, this particular example and her car and everything is a great example of whimsy. But more importantly... You know, when we were kids, a lot of times, with our, I'll speak for myself, but I think we all got our action figures and we played with them. And our imaginations, what we were, we were just, they were analogs, they were avatars for what was happening in our imaginations, the, the, the play. And we've, you know, the, there's all the science in the world discussing what, how, why play is important. But there is a pretty demarcated line in many adults where play changes, and the only mm. real play is if they go to, you go to the gym and you shoot hoops with your friends, or maybe you're playing a video game or whatnot. But there are other outlets and other creative ways to play and just keep that creativity, that that childlike wonder and play and whimsy, uh, mo uh, moving as an adult. And this is a great example. This is a I want to be friends with this person because <laughs> yes, that is fun. They are, they don't take they they aren't taking life so seriously. There are you know you could very easily from the outside if you got, when you're thinking about bills. I just paid my taxes, and you get in that very one zone. You'd be like, I don't have time to to stick a watch on the back of my action figure. Like, what are, what are you talking about? Plenty of people would probably go down that line, of, but not me, not us, not the people we're engaging with here. That's awesome, right? I don't need it's a awesome. reason. Right? There's no. I don't need to explain it to you. It's, it's just it's cool. rad. Yeah. So it's thank you. Because it's cool. That's thank the only you. answer you need. Uh, an Android just phone. Just stick your Picard figures in ice cubes in every limb. That's cool. That's, it's it is. And uh, if we're the only you. people who will put it on the internet, we will put it. We will on put the it on internet. the internet. <laughs> uh, so speaking of whimsy and speaking of Picard, all right. So uh, we did in a previous video. Uh, Picard trapped in ice, but guess what? That is not the only silly thing that the 2022 Playmates Picard has gotten himself into, uh, sent to us and created by our good friend Sean Mulhall. We have Riverdance Picard. Happy St. Patty's. Oh my God. <laughs> Wait, roll it again. Roll it again. Uh, amazing. <laughs> One more time for fun. <laughs> oh my god. That's perfect. That's awesome. That is phenomenal. Uh and wow. impression I, too, Keith. It was just St. Patty's Day. It was. Sean, thank you so much for creating that. The world is a better place because mm -hmm. that exists. Uh and thank you for sending it. Uh yeah. Stop motion. Right? Stop motion with these figures. I hadn't even thought about that. We could That's definitely. A, yeah, that is a whole episode, in fact. Send us your stop motions. If you haven't made them yet, make them. But there's all kinds of apps on the phone. That would be really cool. Oh, so, so cool. Yeah, so um, if if you, you – know, we talked about the figures. Talk about this. Do you, is there any nonsense that your Picard has gotten into that you can send our way? Uh, please do. Because uh, I think that's my favorite new segment on Look at My New Star Trek Toys. What you know, nonsense I, I've been is thinking Picard of one getting too. I, I've been thinking of one, too. So I'm going to pitch a random episode as well and see what we can maybe get in. Um, have you seen uh, all the, you know, the, the internet is basically based in fails, right? Uh, skateboarding mm -hmm. fails. This fails. People falling down making fools of themselves. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. We've seen amazing customs. 
But I'm sure in the process of making these customs, a lot of you have created monstrosities. <laughs> Things that did not go so well, and you attempted at, at X, but you ended with Y. I want to see some of the Ys. Send your monstrosities to us at look at my Star Trek toys at gmail.com. That is a whole episode I'm waiting to see. Oh my God. That's, I think that's really like, I shouldn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> Please kill me. <laughs> oh. Wow. Okay. Well, <laughs> thank you for sitting through all of our nonsense once again. Uh, you can reach us at lookatmystartrektoys at gmail.com. You can please uh, comment below with all of your thoughts and feelings about this. Give us a like. Give us a subscribe. Check us out on patreon.com slash K and M. We're going to be back next week with the unboxing. I told you there are boxes at each of our houses from you who have sent it. And neither one of us knows what's in the box. Uh, so who knows? It could be a very interesting episode. Uh, it, I don't think it's ticking, so it won't be our last episode. <laughs> but we will uh, We will be back. Um, so, uh, yeah. So, you know, that's all usual stuff. Mike, till then. This has been Look at my Star Trek toys!